everyone how are you guys doing um how has your weekend been going and i uh, hope you all are doing really well <laughs> just i'm just going to give it a few moments until you all join me hey everyone how are you guys doing <laughs> i hope you guys are having a fabulous weekend because today's topic is quite intense and it's something that you guys are going to face head on because it is about the wounded feminine and a lot of twins go through this phase. Uh, I'm just going to give it a couple of moments before all of you all come in. And, and then, hi, Bella, Bella, how are you? How is, how is everything going with you? I hope everything is going well. And are you guys all excited about today's topic? Oh, now I see more of you all coming in. All right. Hi, Ariella. I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> Good to see you. So as usual, the first couple of minutes, I'm going to like check in with you guys. Uh, tell me how you guys have been uh, doing and how everything is uh, going on with you guys. I would love to hear about it all. Oh, Lorinda. So good to see you. Oh, you guys are amazing. Like, truly, like, it's such a pleasure to see all of you all. And it brings me so much joy. And Melanie, oh, lovely, lovely to see you. Great to hear, Bella, that you're doing well. And Crystal, that is wonderful. Just, like, guys, just give me one sec. I'm just going to, like, grab, like, some water and I'll be right back. I am back. So tell me guys, how have you, how has everything been going on? Like, um, how have you been feeling? It has been quite intense, even though <laughs> this um, last week has been very intense and I've been wanting to do my daily uh, channelings as well. And um, one theme that kept, kept coming up was that a lot of divine feminines were going through this uh, phase of doubt and fear and and a lot of uneasiness, wondering what was happening to their divine masculine. And it was just going down that downward slope. So the whole of last week was uh, extremely, extremely um, intense and dense <laughs> and quite powerful in its meaning because it actually kind of uh, got a lot of uh, divine feminines to do further work. Oh, fantastic. I'm so good to see all of you all. Uh, Lorin, uh, hi Melanie, <laughs> great to see you. Uh, Lorinda, he hasn't made the move yet. I'll ask how he's feeling about this move and about me from his 3D self. Amy, hi, hi Amy, <laughs> good to see you. <coughs> Bardi, um, hi Bardi, <laughs> and Bardi says hi to everyone. Melanie, energies are crazy. Two tower moments so far this week. Yes, I completely agree. There were two major tower moments uh, this week and I really wanted to update, but then work was full on and I just couldn't get <coughs> that time to like do those updates. But definitely this weekend, I'll be doing some updates on my page, Twin Flames Reunited. Um, Crystal, hi Crystal. I said hi to Mel um, uh, Melanie. Both Melanies are here. Hi, Melanie Lauret. And <coughs> <coughs> yes, Bharati is sharing with us. I've been feeling like that for the past two weeks. Doubts, unwanted thoughts. Those unwanted thoughts have been like hitting the collective so badly that a lot of divine feminines are living in so much fear and and worry. If like, oh, what if my DM is with someone else or uh, 
is everything even real with my DM? Like all this while, like what I experienced, like, like you're questioning a lot of these things and it can be quite a toll. It can take quite a toll on, on how you've been feeling. And especially, you know, you guys all have a lot of other responsibilities as, as well. So it, it's definitely something that's extremely heavy. And so good on y'all for coping and surviving because next week is going to get better and things will turn around and uh, August is coming. So August is going to be a month of inspiration and motivation. So that's going to be interesting. Hi, Mindy. Hi, Paige. Yes, 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 Mindy. Yes, that's what I was just saying. Yeah. Yeah, some of you Divine Feminines might have been feeling a little off <coughs> and that would have, um, that would have really messed, messed you in, in your mind. Yeah. Lorinda, I did mean I will ask that when we get to the channeling part. I, have, I, I haven't had any tower moments this past week that I noticed anyway, just living in, living in all one day at a time. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's wonderful, Lorinda. Um, so sometimes when you live one day at a time, you're able to cope things better because it's so easy to be carried, carried away by the energies of the collective. So it's often important to actually take a break and always stay connected with the divine, to the universe, to God, uh, to yourself, and to understand that what you're experiencing is beyond what the logical and rational mind can actually decipher within See, I was like looking for water. <laughs> Need to fill up more water. Oh, I'm, I'm feeling angry a little. Yes. So consider this week, I mean last week and the coming week to be two weeks of release. And allow this period to like, you know, like don't push them away or bury them deep within. Face them. Like face those issues because there's always an issue that comes out and often and and this is related to today's topic the wounded feminine you know and you don't want to go in that line of being a toxic feminine or a wounded feminine because it's very hard to come out of that phase so often it starts with this kind of very intense tiring energies and then after that the divine feminine goes down the downward slope and then she keeps going down <laughs> Crystal Paul, I've been feeling angry this week too. Wow, two of you guys have been feeling angry. MJ, so happy to see you. That's why MJ and I thought this topic is going to be really good for all of you guys here because it's more of recognizing like what are the signs of going down the line of a wind wounded feminine and tips to actually get out of it. And Elena, so good to see you too. <laughs> Amy, yes, that was that's what is so hard. I want to rationalize it all. And of course, a lot of us want to rationalize it all, you know, and, and, and that's what our professions make us do. That's what earth makes us do, to, to have a logical and rational reasoning for everything. But the truth is this connection is beyond what it seems to be. And it is. And and that's why you guys are even here, because you guys have you guys know and have accepted the fact that you are on, most of you are on this twin flame journey. And this twin flame journey is not for the faint hearted either. And you know, as a soul that you guys chose this experience. Hello, Kelly. So good to see you. And uh, Mindy, just an update. My friend married the guy in Dominic Republic. And the only way we know is because she sent us a photo of her in a wedding dress. Oh, let's all wish her the goodness and great luck and happiness and prosperity and abundance, you know. Um, I wish your friend all the best. I know you're looking out for her, but, you know, silently let's, it might work out. Like I've, I, you know, things may turn around and be the best for her. Because usually there's always, um, you know, especially with marriages and all this, there's always blessings from the divine because it is a sacred ritual. Even though it's an earth ritual, it's still sacred. Crystal, I had Reiki and I couldn't feel the energy like I typically do. That's why it has been very, very, very intense. And usually, uh, 
post full moon energies tend to be like that and you may be wondering like why is it going on for so long yeah and and reiki has got its own way of working you know and and i've been doing i've been doing reiki on so many people all these years and and after attaining attaining mastery in it and being a reiki master one thing i can say is that reiki works in its own way like reiki is its own divine intelligence you know sometimes you may be feeling why am i not feeling it like my other sessions but it works appropriately appropriately in areas that you need it working for which you may not at that time understand but that's the reason why like reiki isosaging healing all has its benefits you know like sometimes short term long term eventually takes months for some you might start seeing changes within days for some it will take months but the the thing is these are good energies these are good healing energies so eventually it will work and it always works you know and that's the beautiful magic about like all these healings you know isis sagem reiki star healing everything belinda hi everyone sorry i'm like no worries we are just starting i was just uh, catching up on uh, everyone on the energies of last week and how it has been very intense and there were a couple of tower moments and there was there's been a lot of um, fear a lot of release and and um, it has been quite hard for divine feminines to cope and for some they have been not really been experiencing so much of those dense collective energies because they have been taking it one day at a time and embracing all that has to come and that comes from a level of awareness and from where you're living from as well like where you're living from meaning like are you living from are you operating from the higher dimensions are you operating from the lower dimensions things like that amy well i know my mood has been feeding off my persons and him my yeah it is <laughs> Kimberly, hello Kimberly, Mindy, yes, true. Hello Henry, so good to see you and thank you for staying awake and especially for all of those of you from Europe, thank you so much for staying awake just for this. I will definitely try to do something about the timings in the future, maybe have another session just for you guys or something. We'll work something out. Hi Shay, good to see you. Oh, thanks, Mindy. I'm so glad you loved that Reiki session, and that's really, really wonderful. Uh, Megan, a little late, but I'm here. Love you, love you too, Megan. And I'm so happy for you. You know, a lot of wonderful things have has been happening. Amy, hello, loves. Hello to you too. Today is such a interesting, intense topic, and all of you divine feminines would understand this, would have experienced this in in um, from little levels to immense levels so the wounded feminine so i'm going to delve right in i realized that while wow, we have been uh, really checking in and tuning into the energies of the of the last week um, and the energies of the last week if you guys watch this video after it's uploaded here you will realize that um, it has been very intense and you can watch it from the start to understand that Hi, how are you? Hi, Amber. So good to see you. So good to see you and everyone. That's fantastic. Henry, I'm tired, but I had to show some support to you and say hi to all the beautiful people. Henry, you are the best. Thank you so much. You know, your presence itself, it's so, like all of your presence is so elevating and adds on to our group energy, which is wonderful because you guys are all vibing so high. You're beautiful people. Always come in here with an open mind. Um, always willing to evolve and grow and um, improve and think, take things to stride. And, and I'm, I'm truly, truly delighted to do these sessions with you all every week because you guys truly value what I've got to say and act on it. And some of you have come into union taking my advice and all this really makes me so happy. And I'm so proud of you guys and it's wonderful. <laughs> Megan, don't worry about that. You know, you would go from zero to 100 and back, you will come back and then kind of fall. Everything will be okay, Megan. You know, like I've worked with a lot of twin flames over the years and a lot of them are in union and they have gone through the worst things that some of you guys may have not even experienced, you know, but when they come out, they end up being the most beautiful, evolved, gorgeous, 
gracious human beings and, and, and union is stable is because both of them have evolved to that level, you know, put everything away. They have truly, truly, truly evolved. And, and that's what is, and that's what this journey is all about. Lately, I've been feeling so thirsty. I think the heat wave is like affecting um, Singapore as well. It's, it's just crazy, you know, like, uh, I hope you guys are all fine because the heat, I, I was reading the new news and the heat wave is pretty bad. <laughs> oh, thanks, Crystal. Hi, Lily. Good to see you. That's why I drink a lot of water, guys. And usually when there's a lot of like, like solar flares and things like that, there's a lot of any um, activations taking place in your dormant DNA as well. So it's important to uh, drink a lot of water and stay hydrated due to the heat and everything else. And even though I was saying like the whole of last week and to present, things have been very intense. There's also deeper healing taking place within the collective. So it's a very good time to purge, to release, to, to actually not put them away or push them inside by bury, but to recognize and recognize where it is coming from. Like example, you're feeling uneasiness and then you're worried. Like go through that thread of uneasiness. Like why am I feeling uneasy? Then deep digger. Then, then you will realize that all your insecurities and unnecessary feelings start coming and analyze each one of them. So example, you're going, through, going down the path of uneasiness. And then after that, you realize the uneasiness comes from fear and then go down like, what is that fear? And that fear is like, what if he's with someone else? Or what if my love, our love is not true? What if this twin flame journey is not even real? Then after that, go there. Why are you feeling this way? You dig deeper, deeper, deeper. And then you realize that the more you go within and connect to the divine, you will be relieved. And then you will also release. Then you're like, what most can happen, you know? And, and then you will rea realize that, you know, it's all right. Whatever your DM does, it's okay because he will eventually come back to you because there is no separation between you all to begin with. Separation in itself is illusion. And that is why it is so important to always tune in to yourself, divine and God. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read some comments before I delve right into the topic. Yes, Lorinda, yes, thirstiness is hitting everyone. Amy, I feel like, um, I feel like mine pulls back there too. He is great and then he gets scared or distant. So I don't know, I'm going to work on me. Yes, every time you feel like your divine masculine is pulling away, there's something within you that is releasing or needs attention. Because often divine feminines have this tendency to be carried away and just focus, which is good, you know, you're enjoying the moment, but there might be underlying issues that need to be healed or need to be, um, need to be solved or need to be completed. So always look through that. Oh, Megan, I'm so sorry to hear that. My mom, Megan says, it's, it's been miserable. My horses were not happy. Campus today, so I gave them baths, which is great. And Megan, don't worry. I'm going to read Megan's uh, comment. You know, I think he scared himself by she went. So this happens a lot to divine masculines. And that's why usually in the early stages, there's always that sort of a mini union. And that mini union is going to be your anchor point for the rest of the connection because you're going to go, you, you're going to always go back to that point when you guys were together and when you were happy. And often the divine masculine gets scared is because this is too good to be true. And then energetically they get so overwhelmed that they tend to move away a little. And the red, rational, logical mind of the divine feminine tends to over think it like for instance they will completely feel miserable and I, I I feel you Megan and my heart goes all out to you Amy I'm looking forward to this topic I went back on track oh I'm so glad so you know exactly so Megan everything will be fine you know probably next week you'll come back and you'll be saying that animal animal is back to his um old spirits and to his old self and you know the capricorn divine masculine can be quite unpredictable um 
Same for Amy as well. Don't worry, you have been doing really well. And especially whenever your divine masculine, this goes to all of you, whenever your divine masculine pulls back, take that time, use the time to really work on yourself, evolve, develop hobbies, like completely focus on you and becoming that best version of yourself. Because when you do that, it actually rekindles those energies and pulls them back in. And always remember your divine masculine is admiring you from afar. You may not know how, but they do it. You know that deep within. Oh, Kelly, that's great. I always have water with me. But yes, I always have bottles of water in bed as well. Sometimes you just feel so dry, especially with the air condition and stuff. Elena, yes. What is Elena's question is very important, guys, and I'm going to talk a few minutes about it. What is your opinion on the Grand Solar Flash? The Grand Solar Flash is an amazing event. Not, a, not an easy one, but um, there is a lot of DNA activations happening. And this happens because the solar flash, the heat, the heat waves and the solar flash really goes deep within providing an overall cleansing for not only the Twin Flame Collective, but everyone who wants to grow spiritually. So it's a good time. So it's a kind of a cleanser. So, and this grand solar flash is actually going to transform a lot of you. It's going to inspire you guys to pursue some of your dreams that you guys have been burying for a long time. It's also going to trigger certain things within you and it's going to be a period of great release. So it's actually a great thing. The Grand Solar Fly is actually something that is going to really transform, eliminate toxins within your body, uh, eliminate things that don't serve you, and actually develop the confidence and build that warrior princess energies within you so that you guys can go all out. And the divine masculines are going to realize the warrior within them and how they are actually the protector of the divine feminine and for them to rise up and fight for this connection as well. So the Grand Solar Flash has inspired the Twin Flame collab Collective a lot as well. But guys, keep drinking water and uh, the heat waves might go on for a while, but things will get better. So it's very important to take care and not panic or get very nervous because good things are coming ahead. Always remember before, uh, <laughs> before be, like when there's a big storm, there's going to be calm after, you know, after a big storm, there's always calm. Lorinda, if they were with someone else, it's just something he's having to work on, he can't with you. Completely agree with that. So there might be certain things like certain cycles, which I've talked about in my previous videos as well. There's some karmic connections that he has to tie up or complete a circle with or cycle with. There's some soulmate connections that he has to, you know, balance those energies. So when he's having those relationship with these other people, don't frown upon it or panic or think that that's the end of the world. And that's when you actually go down the path of the wounded feminine because you completely panic and you're like, oh no, damn, what is going to happen? This is actually a test for the divine feminine to actually trust the divine, trust God. I mean, you guys are called divine feminine. There's a reason for it, right? You guys are not just called feminine, you guys are called divine feminine, which is which means you guys have to go back to the divine to find answers. See, I'm so thirsty. <laughs> Usually I don't get so thirsty. So today's session might go a little longer because there's so much, especially with the wounded feminine, to talk so much about that. Megan, one thing I'll give him is that he has been making an effort to communicate daily, not every few days, actually daily, which is wonderful. You see that Capricorn Divine Masculine is actually making an effort because he really cares and he really values you and things will get better. Lily, actually, it does apply to both twins, Split Souls and Monadic. Uh, people have that impression. You see, monadic flames might be more highly advanced, but the thing is when they're on Earth, they still go through the earthly experiences just like split soul twin flames. And that's why sometimes, not all, they also have the runner chaser energies. Naturally, a lot of people, other relationships also tend, karmic connections also have that runner chaser energies. 
and uh, monadics do have that, but it's more of like an illusory phantom kind of runner chaser. It wouldn't. It's not as strong as split or twin flames. Amy, sometimes I think mine is a karmic, so we go through this push and pull, but you confirm this is a monadic twin flame. Yes, like I explained, this push and pull does happen to a lot of couples, even married couples, you know, it happens, you know, that inattentiveness, the push and pull, it's, it's quite a common trait within the masculine. And then the divine masculine, it goes another level. So monadic flames experience this in some degrees as well. Amy, that's what is so hard. We are left in 3D thinking, what did I do wrong? Yes, and and that really takes a toll on the divine feminine. And that's why after like a rejection or being completely ghosted or abandoned, the divine feminine goes down the path of the toxic or wounded feminine. And the toxic and wounded feminine actually becomes a very, very ugly person because all the ugliness comes out of her. You know, she becomes cranky, she becomes... She becomes, she, keep, she can become completely unpleasant. And probably that's what you guys may have noticed in some other groups as well. Like the wounded feminine actually goes through that whiny, whining. They feel like, oh, I did like, I, I, I want the world to like molly coddle me or like I am so pathetic. You know, they go through that. And, and that's really toxic because you're actually bringing your mind down to 3D, you know. So they start going through this phase of like, oh, this is not fair, why is it happening to me? And they actually start scolding their divine masculine. And what they don't understand is by talking ill or feeling critical, they're actually amplifying it and they're actually sending it right back to their divine masculine. And that's why the gap tends to widen more. And the toxic feminine is so unpleasant to be around. She starts losing friends. Her family members can't understand what is happening to her. And she keeps going through this cycle of self-blame, unworthiness, not feeling good enough. And, and it's, it's, it, it's almost like that leads to the dark night of the soul. And some of the divine feminines actually come out good healed and repaired but then some divine feminines really go down the toxic path and never recover so they spend they spend all their time just looking at forecasts spending like being obsessed another trait is there's a lot of self-pity unworthiness obsession they're obsessed with their divine masculine they're constantly on them like what are they doing what are they doing? Who are they with? And that's why they get blocked as well because the energies are too intense. Mindy, the moon definitely brought up a lot in me and needs to be acknowledged, felt, healed and purged. Yes, this super full moon has been as intense as the solar flare in some ways. Ah, Aries DM. Aries Divine Masculine. That's a whole nother chapter. Aries, Aries um, Divine Masculine always have that. I am that protector, 100 times fold energies within. So they tend to make decisions that might be quite surprising to the divine feminine. We'll go more into it at some point. Mine too, Megan. I laughed out loud at the unpredictable. He loves to spring things on me last minute. The hangout and going to get the pool table were all spur of the moment. Being so spontaneous, isn't it? Amy, yes, I'm working on changing career paths, and I know this is what God is intending. Our work has been chaos, so this is a huge push from God. I think good things will happen. Yes, absolutely, Amy. Like, what I'm channeling for you is that this career path change is really going to be uplifting and so excited for you. Yes, Elena, you're so excited. Lily, I had unblocked my TF for some time. But like two weeks ago, I blocked him again. His phone number and all social media. About a week ago, I had a dream that he entered my bedroom, but then he turned around and walked away before I could say anything. Or, you see, all these dreams that you dream about, your divine masculine, actually says a lot, you know. Like, these are like visitations of your DM's higher self from the etheric planes. There's so much meaning to it, you know. So, for instance, Lily's dream. He was obviously triggered by all the blocking and unblocking and 
not sure what his divine feminine is feeling. So that's the reason why he actually came, checked in on her, turned around and walked away before she could actually respond. <laughs> so it's a beautiful dream. Amber, totally, I feel that too. I feel like he thought it was too good to be true when we first met. I feel the back and forth too. But every time he comes back, it moves forward more. So I just keep telling myself that he loves me and it will all work out. I mean, I can't, I can't see him having the amazing connection we have together with anyone else, which is true. And Amber, what you're doing is good. You know, you, you are confirming, affirming that he does love you. And it's, that's true. In, in a twin flame connection, this love is going to be like no other. So often they always come back. It's just that that separation phase tends to really bring out the wounded feminine uh, behaviors really out. And the wounded feminine is actually a very sad, she's going through so much. She has no one to talk about this to, you know, there's not much of support. She has to deal with this all herself. And that wounded feminine suffers so much that she becomes spiteful and all those ugly character traits come out, you know, like unworthiness or always blaming the divine masculine for how she's feeling, self-pity, whining, a lot of whining. And you would have noticed this in a lot of groups. And I didn't talk so much about the obsession state. So obsessed with all those like choose a pile readings on YouTube and watching all those videos on like 10 steps to achieve union, 20 steps to achieve union. Firstly, remember every twin flames journey is unique, be it monadic or split, it's still unique. And it's so unique that you can't really follow a guideline or steps. So that's why sometimes that in itself can be misleading because you're like, oh, I am at step five. Why isn't step six happening? It doesn't work that way. Like every journey, like example, all your experiences are unique to you. No one person has the same experience as you. We all experience things differently. Same thing with the divine um, twin flame journey. It's the same. Everyone has got a different experience. I'm going to, wow, there's 10 comments. I'm going to read up all the comments. Henry, I think what I've been doing after he got scared is not go, um, is not go to that energy. I have been working on focusing on how I want my Hugo to be and perceive him just like that. And all the stuff I don't like does not happen in my own reality. And I must say, it really helps me to stay balanced, which is good. And I have uh, discussed this with Henry as well. So it's very important when you're thinking about your divine masculine, to actually visualize and not only focus on the images, but to focus on how you're feeling because that's how manifestation amplifies as well. So example, you're having this happy image of you guys together, but then you have feelings of unworthiness or, or, or things are not going to work up or yearning or, I mean, good yearning is good, bad yearning is bad. So it's very important to notice how, what kind of emotions is being released because that's what's going to be projected in, um, eventually. So it's not even the image, it's how you feel. So that's why one, one good exercise is actually to go to a memory where you're really happy with your divine masculine and actually relive that moment and let those emotions come out. And those emotions are what's going to bring you back and create and recreate more moments like those. And because that's the signal you're sending out to the universe, you know, this is what makes me feel happy. So often it's doubt that creates more doubt. It's fear that creates more fear. And going down that lane of completely being pitiful or think that, oh, I don't deserve this. I'm always sabotaged in love. I'm always rejected by men. I'm ugly, I'm fat. All these things is what happens to the wounded feminine. She has such low self-worth. And that's when she becomes judgmental, critical, jealous, envious, everything, all of that. And that too, you know, shouldn't be pushed away, now, especially for a wounded feminine. If she's going through all of that, she should actually head on, analyze them. Why am I feeling that way? What were the things that happened in my childhood? Were there issues that I didn't encircle? Were there things that I have to face, release, um, 
go through a catharsis, you know, all kinds of those things. And that's why it's so important, guys, to really, 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 really acknowledge that it's okay to be not okay. A lot of wounded families don't even acknowledge that they are wounded or they're going down the line of toxicity. You know, they just tend to ego. Another case of wounded feminines is that they let their ego take over and they think that they know it all and then they no longer operate from love. So they start they start doing things to just trigger the divine fem divine masculine. But what they don't understand, it's not triggering them. It's pushing them away, away further. That's why it's so essential, guys, to always, always, always work on yourselves because Working on yourselves is the best thing you guys can do. So another part is why do divine feminines stray in the first place? Because they keep comparing their journey with other people. They keep reading about all this beautiful literature that's out there, but there's also not so good materials. That's why you have to be very, very selective of what content you put inside because your mind is observing everything is absorbing and observing everything so it's so important to choose what you allow into your mind so that's why the first and foremost step is when divine feminines stray and go down the line of toxicity surrender to the universe surrender to the divine pray to god like be like a child converse with the universe and say that I want to be myself. I don't want to go through this line of self-pity, unworthiness, unrequited love. Keep telling everyone, oh, I don't deserve this. The more you say, I don't deserve it, you're not going to get what you deserve because that's what you're telling the universe. You like being in a state where you feel undeserved or uh, not taken seriously or feeling worthy. And that's why you really have to trust and surrender and completely Surrender and when I mean trust and surrender is that you completely surrender to this journey And always remember the universe has your back So the universe is going to protect you and care for you and you will be led To a point where things will become more harmonious and positive and that's how you heal So being a toxic feminine isn't bad but not acknowledging it and start going down further and further and deeper into it is what's going to backfire and make you guys not even unite. So there are some toxic feminines who don't and then they mirror that back to their divine masculines and they become toxic too and that's when there's a lot of unpleasant things that happen. A lot of complaining. Another thing is there's a lot of complaining that happens. You know, the wounded feminine complains a lot. She's naggy. She's whiny. She, people really can't be around her. You know, it becomes that bad. And they start speaking so ill of their divine masculines. Like ill meaning like to the point that, um, ex example, it is in an open forum, to the point that other people may be like, is that person really their twin flame? Is that person really, like sometimes a lot of people may think that that might be a karmic connection or a toxic connection and people naturally want to help people so they go into that protective mode. So often for a lot of wounded feminines, they amplify things. So they make it really, really, really sound exaggerated and that is why it's very often to actually search within instead of pushing all the blame to your divine masculine and that's why it's so important to focus on the internal instead of focusing on the external so for example it's good to look at forecasts once in a while you know and and see whether you resonate with it or not but some are just obsessed with it you know and they are like oh no is this what's happening is this what's happening why am i not feeling that way because general forecasts are general and that's why they are general and if you ever want like a paid private consultation you can always book one with me you know so that is why all this speaking ill and focusing on the external and being obsessed with the journey and other people's journey and all the steps and processes and videos just widens the gap 
So this journey essentially is teaching you to focus on yourself, your growth and your evolution. And it takes a while, you know, and because time is limited on earth, but your soul is forever. And remember, miracles happen all the time and the universe is full of magic. The time, you're, the time that you think you're wasting now is actually your healing period, your growing period, your evolving period. If you just go into a connection with your divine, with your divine masculine be, being a toxic, wounded feminine, it's going to backfire on you and that union is not even going to last. So why not do it right, heal, be God-centered, connect to the divine, completely surrender, trust the process, and allow union to come to you instead of you choosing, chasing union. All right, I'm going to read. Like, now I see there's so many comments. All right, Amber, I totally feel that too. I feel like he thought it was too good to be true to when we first met. I feel the back and forth too. Um, I think I read that comment of yours. So yes, and, and the reason why I read it again, Amber, is because always when you meet your twin flame, it's going to be like that. It's going to be that too good to be true because all those memories and moments are what's going to keep you going when you are in separation. So it's all part of the divine design. If you don't have such a strong connection, you wouldn't even believe this journey or trust this journey or trust this process. And that's why the early stages of meeting your divine masculine is completely divine. It's like coming home feeling, you feel complete. And that's when the healing, the, everything starts and all your triggers start coming up and catharsis happens. Henry, I think what I've been doing after he got scared is not go... Oh, yes, I've read that. Ah, uh, Megan, but he's announced us officially being a couple, so he can't go back on that now. Said it to my daughters and everything. <laughs> yes, he really made that commitment. <laughs> Amy, yes, I love that. I remind myself that I'm amazing and that I'm divinely protected. So, yeah, I feel like I was close to going to the Wounded Feminine this week. I knew I needed this topic. Yes, I think a lot of uh, Divine Feminines were, because it was so intense, this week that they were all like going like kind of that's why i'm trying to get you guys back into that holistic feminine part the holistic divine feminine part where you are empowered the empowered divine feminine part in fact so i'm glad you guys are tuning in and um sharing your thoughts belinda recently i've been able to change my mindset i fully embrace that god is looking after both of us and will put everything into place when it's time it's really helped when I've missed him. I keep reminding myself that we are connected uh, divinely and that missing him is just an illusion. Exactly. You said it so beautifully, Belinda. Thank you so much for that. Megan, big, get your, sh get your shit together and we got a pool table at Westminster. We got to go. What time? Uh, hurry up. 220 pounds lightweights disassembling a pool table and carrying it out of a basement 150 pounds pieces of wow that is a lot uh lorinda i feel like i've embraced my journey from the start after talking with and seeing comments from other dfs i feel like my acceptance of that journey has been such a natural process compared to others i've encouraged my dm along the way always try to say uplifting things to him I want him to be happy, whole and healthy with peace of mind and peace in his heart. I give him space. Of course, I've went through the obsessive phase and then, oh, he needs me so I can help him heal phase. I went through that where I focus completely on being together. Once you reach that point, you realize you need to focus on yourself and your own healing things start to shift. Knowing and really knowing it are two different things. And Lorinda, you have summarized it so beautifully. Like you have like, understood and really inspired the conversation that's going on here because acceptance is very important and there's this natural tendency for divine feminines or feminines in general for women to want to take care of their men and that's why they like to see them all the time because they want to heal they want to mother them and that mothering is what makes the men run away 
and they often don't focus on their own healing on their own wounds like example this divine feminine has an experience of being rejected all the time if she doesn't work on that unrequited love or on on her worthiness then it's always going to pop up through their divine masculine because their divine masculine is going to do exactly that tell them stuff like i'm not interested in you you're not good enough for me and things like that that's why when Lorinda says knowing and really knowing it are two different things. And focusing on your own healing is very, very much essential. Belinda, mine is a Scorpio DM. Actually, I would probably do that one, you know. Um, the different signs and how the diff different divine masculines act or something like that. Henry, actually the push and pull is something I learned during dancing with the Latin American ballroom dancing, the rumba. It's called the dance of love and it's all about push and pull. Wow, you see, this rumba dance speaks for it. <laughs> and I absolutely love it in that dance at least. That probably made me also appreciate the push and pull as well. Hugo just preferred it more to be neutral, I think. When Hugo and I argued in 2019, I don't know who watched Modern Family, but I'm Gloria and he's Jay. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so thanks, Henry, for bringing that analogy out. Because in life, in love, there is going to be a push and pull. And you can't always expect to control or dominate your partner either. So that's another sign of the toxic feminine. She wants control. She wants to dominate. She's obsessed. So she wants to control his life. And that's what widens the gap further, guys. Amy, when you were talking about dreams, I've had several pregnancy dreams with how to tell him. He is always hard to find. Then finally, my last dream, I actually had a, and just felt him. Then he had a dream, he caught a falling baby. I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's a literal baby, but wondering what your thoughts on that are. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of issues surfacing. So usually babies, uh, when it's not literally taken, it, it's, a, it's a sign of birth. It's a sign of newness. So it's like you have your dream right in front of you and you feel like your DM is actually catching a falling baby. So he's actually catching your falling dream and protecting it. So I feel like that's what's happening. You know, like there's a lot of things that you're birthing and your DM is actually subconsciously helping you being there, protecting your interests. So that's what I'm perceiving. Uh, Lily, if you, have, if you have a moment, can you provide a message from my guides? Your guides want you to know that you have to let go and release and really trust the journey and surrender. And your guides are always there for you and connect with them, talk to them, write out a journal to them and they will always respond. That's what your guides want you to know. So Amy, that's a very interesting dream. I would suggest that you jot it down in a notebook or a journal, you know, and then write down the interpretations that I've told you. But basically, this is about newness, rebirth, re renewal, and the, the place your divine masculine plays, the role your divine masculine plays on that. Lorinda, I never did act spiteful or blame him nor anything. Thankfully, this is a phase I never went through. I had a lot of empathy for the struggles he was going through. That is wonderful, Lorinda. Actually, a lot of divine feminines don't go through that line of that wounded feminine or toxic feminine either. But some do, and 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 because they are really suffering, and 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 that is part of their personality for them to act that way. So that's why there is no judgment, or there is no. Um, you only show them more love and empathy because they are struggling and suffering and try to figure out this journey itself. Exactly like Lorinda says, I never could bring myself to say anything hateful to him. Amy, same. I get low in my self-worth, but never spiteful or angry. I have to bring my self-worth up. Yes, exactly. For a lot of de divine feminines, it's about bringing your self-worth up. And, and that is such an essential part of this journey, you know. Working on yourselves. And working on yourselves, it's not a one-liner. It's so much more to it. Working on every aspect of yourself creating that beautiful best version of yourself and you know how beautiful that is when you become the best version of yourself because you're becoming better and better and that glow and that wonderment that accompanies it is just transformational 
Megan, I always smile at the memory of Animal coaching my younger daughter on the pool table, honing a skill and sharpening her technique. He was so in his element and literally glowing. Wow, that's wonderful. And these are the memories you should focus on when things are not uh, going in the best direction. And this is what's going to anchor those best moments back again into your life. So keep reminiscing those moments. Amy, I'm grateful that I can see what I'm hating when... I'm grateful that I can see when I'm hating that way. It might take a minute, but I'll pull myself out of it. I'm thankful for this group. Yeah, that's wonderful. And Amy, we're so happy to have you here every week as well. Lorinda, yes, you get to go back in time when the triggers hit. Why did this or that hurt my feelings? When was the first time you remember something, someone causing you to feel that way? Exactly. It always goes back to a state of reaction, you know, like which I did speak about last week. Often we don't respond to situations. We react based on what our mind has thought on events similar to it, similar to this. So example, like your DM is acting this way. You go back to all your past relationship experience and you react based on your experience rather than responding to your DM. And that's when it creates a further gap as well. So it's so important to respond instead of react. And you also got to go back to time and reminisce those beautiful feelings, you know, because that's what's going to create more. Instead of focusing on all that's going bad, focusing on all that went well and anchor that timeline back in. And it's also important to actually go through that state of catharsis well, trying to change the ways you would react and getting into that mindset of responding. Belinda, I had to leave a couple of TF Facebook groups because they were so negative with whining and bringing my vibrate. Yes, this is what I've been talking about. That is the toxic feminine, you know, the wounded feminine. And exactly when, when you feel like that's no longer serving you, you guys, you made a very good decision, Belinda. Because that's why MJ always works on protecting the group and and she's so honest and beautiful and direct. Uh, thanks, MJ, for being such a wonderful person. <laughs> and that's why that's why there's a lot of honesty in our group. And that's why uh, we are always encouraged as readers to also give what is there, like not to hold back. And that's why my readings are always very honest. And I, I do checks. And if someone is not on the journey, I do tell them. I mean, it's hard, but I feel like a lot of women are taking it to stride and evolving and acknowledging it and growing and becoming better versions of themselves. And that's amazing. And I, I feel so gifted and um, lucky to be able to expand that service of mind to humanity, you know, making a difference in other people's lives. That's, that's a wonderful thing. Amy, I want this journey to bring out the best in me, not the worst. Exactly. Ultimately, it will bring out the best in you, but sometimes you cannot avoid the worst as well. And when you acknowledge this, it wouldn't be as bad as you think it's going to be. So acknowledgement and recognition are a few key elements that really inspires this journey. Bella Bella, I remember when we met, he was so nice, lovely and protective of me. I think sometimes it was a very happy time. I believe we can have that good time together again So because you are going to. Bella Bella and it's so good that you think of those moments because that's what's anchoring and creating going to create all those moments again. Lorinda, I've always told him he has all the room in the world to make mistakes and all the time he needs to decide what he wants. <laughs> exactly, that's such a good mindset. Yes, mindset he doesn't understand why he can only be distanced with us right now. Risk. So I said I love him. So his distance days just as much as his softer days. Oh, that's sweet. Asha, this is so good and needed right now. Oh, thank you so much. This comment has really brightened and lightened my heart. I'm so glad that I'm doing this with you guys because I know this week has been a tough one and you guys are all winners and wonderful, wonderful um, divine feminines and you guys are doing amazing mindy thank you this was the best life yet oh thank you so much mindy you're so sweet wow that was so touching and really once encourages me inspires me to keep on bringing these amazing lives to you and thank you so much again mindy 
Kelly, that's what I've said to Lorinda as well, that it's nice to talk about other things outside the connection. Talk about other things other than the twin flame connection. We have a life and other interests too. And it's nice to just talk about any topic and not be obsessed and talking just about it all day. Meaning me and Lorinda have the connection that we can talk about just exactly guys you guys can talk about so many other things and there's so many beautiful friendships out there you know this tribe we have here you know of all these beautiful um, female energies and how we are empowering one another so there's so much more to life just and when you take that off take all your attention of the of the journey it actually comes back to you like a boomerang so it's so important to like detach Amy, I think of this unsteady period as protection from God. It simply isn't time for us because we are both transformed. Exactly, you said it. You hit the nail right on. Because you don't want to be with your divine masculine when you're so unstable. And likewise, your divine masculine doesn't want to be with you as well when he's going through all of that. So it's so essential to actually grow and evolve and come back as those beautiful versions of yourself. Bella, Bella, I feel him inside me when I'm doing meditation. I enjoy the meditations now and doing different things every day, which I'm drawn to. Megan, I was never honestly able to talk badly or be spiteful towards animal either. Despite the pain I felt, it would even try, I would even try the words would turn to ash. <laughs> so beautiful, Megan. <clears throat> Oh, mothering him just pisses him off. Yeah, men don't like to be mothered. They already have a mother. Guys, don't forget. All our divine masculines actually have a mother and they have been mothered enough. And some are even mothered by their sisters and <laughs> God knows all their, their feminine people around them. He loves the nurturing, but yeah, turn it to nurturing, but not mothering. But I think too much makes him feel weak or soft and he's a warrior. Lorinda, they want to take care of us. They are traditional and want to provide for us and protect us. Yes, Mindy, you're so right. Men want to do the, the protect, protection. So when we mother them, they want to actually mother us, you know. So and women don't give them because they naturally, because women are mothers, you see. We become mothers and that's why we feel that way. Thank you. That has happened over different nights. Then him catching the baby was his when we were napping together. I will definitely write your interpretation down. You're welcome, Amy. Hello, Linda. So good to see you. Um, okay, I'm just going to... Wow, there's a lot of comments. All right. I'm just going to try to cover as many as I can. Lorinda, I recently asked him to let him help him. He was having a bad tower moment at the time. It really rubbed him the wrong way at the time. I think it made him feel incapable or equipped or, or ill-equipped to live his own life. Yes, actually that happens, you know. Sometimes what happens is the divine feminines tend to overdo things, overly care. Like example, start like during the pandemic, you know, you start turning up at his apartment and bring loads of food and start mothering him and giving him all that overwhelming. Of course, he appreciates it, but it's too much. Like you send him like pails and pails, buckets and buckets of food or overly caring about him, overdoing everything. And that is a turn off as well. And that's why the divine masculine teaches the divine feminine a hard lesson of her own worthiness because the divine feminine often does that because she doesn't know how else to express her love. So she goes through that path of losing her self-respect and turning up at his door, even though he's like pushing her away. So when he's pushing you away, go with the flow, just like the dance, you know, Roomba, you know, when there's push, pull, you know, just do it, like go with the flow and then he will come back. And, and that's why the separation phase tends to last long. So diverting your attention into other things is very good as well. Melanie, I feel like like one of the like one of the ones that have been separated the longest and that I've been in 5D union forever. See any changes in the near future? Oh, Melanie, yes, I know you have told me before. But don't worry, the longest separation is going to lead to the happiest moments and memories, you know. This next stage in your life when you guys unite again, you're going to be 
those teenagers again, like when you met, and you guys are going to go on so many adventures, and it's going to be so beautiful. It's going to be such a beautiful journey. And Melanie, you're such a beautiful soul, and and he's a beautiful soul too. And you guys will end up doing so many things for yourselves and the world. And I see a lot of travel on the cards for you. You know, you guys will be traveling a lot. And you won't even think about that 18 years of separation because that 18 years will be one fleeting moment when you are both in union and you'll realize that that was truly worth the wait. It's going to be amazing, Melanie. Like, I see so many wonderful moments between the both of you. Bella, Bella. Megan's answer to Bella, Bella. Yes, Animal is extremely protective of me. I told him about one of the guys on an opposite shift from me being disrespectful and he said, next time the dude wants to bitch about a mop bucket, tell him the next time I'll come down to your station and make him wear it as a hat. Oh, you see, it's so sexy, you know, when the divine masculine does that, you know. It's that, it's that manliness, that warrior nature to protect the divine feminine. I find it extremely sexy. It's so beautiful. Hi, Ro. Now settled in from work late, but you're all so happy to see you. Don't worry, I'll be going on for another 15 minutes because the questions are coming up and the topic is really heated. And guys, these videos are all there under, under images, under photos, and you can always watch my videos. They're always there. So if you have missed anything, you can always go back and watch it from the start. And uh, Welcome, Ro. You might join in late, but we are actually, you know, having very heated discussions about the toxic feminine and how they go astray and down the path of becoming whiny, spiteful, jealous, all the bad um, characteristics of any human tends to pop up in the divine feminine. And, and, the, and the more they stay in those energies, the more they go into those energies. In fact, there are different stages. Stage one is self-pity. Like, oh, I'm unworthy. Bad things always happen to me. I don't deserve this. I, I, I mean, I, I always end up deserving. I always end up having bad luck. So it goes into phase one, a phase one, self-pity. And then all that self-pity turns into spitefulness, you know, and then they see other people being happy, other people doing wonderful things, other people getting married, and then they go into the all jealous mode. So that is how they go astray. But this video is about bringing those setting those emotions away and coming back so when you feel like you're going astray number one connect to the divine pray to god you know however you do it do it your way connect to the universe secondly acknowledge that you're actually going down that dark path so that you can actually awaken and come back to the right path thirdly focus on the internal instead of going to phase three obsessiveness obsessed about twin flame readings twin flame energies twin flame everything all the forecasts on youtube tiktok on social media don't go that line see so i've, I've talked about three phases self-pity spitefulness and obsessiveness all three things are recipes for disaster and when you go through that line of obsession the gap between you and your divine masculine widens even further. And so when you feel all this way, number one, connect to the universe, connect to God. Number two, all these things are happening externally, go internally. And I, like I chat in the earlier part of this video, recognize those emotions. Where are they coming from? Often they come from childhood wounds or life wounds or experiences from past experiences wounded relationships example you might have a toxic relationship so all of those wounds are surfacing so when they surface acknowledge them where are they coming from go through it and realize that oh it's actually not me another thing is wounded feminines go through that self-blame phase as well they either start blaming the external or they go into that self-blaming phase so it's important not to go down that line as well surrender and trust everything to the universe you know everything that happens happens for a reason it's all part of the learning curve and it's about you becoming the best version of yourself like a diamond doesn't become so shiny without it going through all that process of becoming a diamond right like a raw diamond is just a rock but the diamond that you see in the shops are actually transformed they go through heat and that's the same thing this period of separation 
or going through everything is actually shaping you to become the best diamond version of yourself. Linda, you and Kelly are amazing readers who have given me awesome insight and guidance. Thank you all. Thanks, Linda. Thank you so much for your kind words. Really means a lot to us. Megan to Lorinda. Oh, God, that's animal through and through. If I get too into that element, he'll give me that look of death and I'll hear him telepathically tell him to let him be the man. Growing like the alpha male he is. Oh, and the divine masculines are such alpha males. Lorinda, oh yes, Kelly Fortune and I talk about anything and everything. I just absolutely love her. I, I love the friendship between you both. You guys are awesome. Amber, can you talk more about what the DMs are going through during this time and how they are feeling? I wish we had some DMs who could come uh, tell us more about what's, what it's like for them and how they are feeling. It's so interesting and uh, I'll just try to be open and observe too. We will make that happen in the future. I will, <laughs> I will try to arrange for that. Let's see, you know, maybe I might get my own DM to share something. Hopefully for the future, let's see. Um, but Amber, you really make a good point. But what I can channel, because I can channel the Divine Masculine Collective too, is that they're going through a lot of guilt and a lot of regret of how they had behaved in the past. And they want to release all of this before coming back to you because they don't want patterns to re-repeat again. They don't want to hurt you because it really hurts them to see you breaking down or broken because they know your love is pure and everything that you have done for them and doing for them comes from the purest place. And they love you from the purest place too and that's why they understand. And when you think about them, they know you're thinking about them as well. And they are thinking about you too. My grandma always say this, you know, when you think about someone, they are thinking about you too. And so give them that time and space to heal, grow and evolve. And it's not easy for the Divine Masculines either. In fact, I have talked about it in my previous videos, how the Divine Masculine feels the collective feels, how, what the Divine Masculine actually goes through. I think it's back in Jen. If you guys uh, go back to that video, you'll be able to understand because I go right in. In fact, they suffer more than the Divine Feminine because the Divine Feminine usually has a tribe, a community to talk about these things. But the Divine Masculine goes through this alone, silently, because obviously they can't go and tell their mates. They're going to be made fun of because not all of them are on a twin flame journey. And you don't see like the Divine Masculines forming a tribe. Forming a tribe, because women are gatherers naturally and men are hunters, you know, so they tend to suffer in silence. And that's why a lot of divine masculines go into workaholic mode. They work and work and work or they go into partying mode, you know, they tend to like party and party or they just try to forget. Because the only way to forget their divine feminine is to go through that phase of really like, you know, because it's not easy. They are always on your mind, just like how our DM is always on our mind. We are on their mind too. And it's hard to believe this because it's beyond rash, rationality and logic, you know, but it is the way it is. And so thanks, Amber. We will definitely make that happen in the future. Um, Amy, and I think that this group and the people I've been able to connect with are just as much a divine part of this journey as well. It's just, it isn't just about the out outcome with our DM. Amy, you put it so beautifully. Exactly. It's, it's about the journey, guys. Often, a lot of um, DFs are focused on the destination, you know. They focused on the union. But there's so much more. Like, you end up making so many friends. You end up going through all the pain and the pleasure, everything. Like, when you're missing, that pure form of yearning, that is a beautiful feeling too, you know. Because it, you know it anchors, it gives you hope. And things like that. So it's about the journey and not the destination. So thanks, Amy, for raising that. And thanks, Amber, for your suggestion and your comments as well. Really, it's, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, knowing how the DMs feel is, is really such um, a part of the puzzle that is beautiful as well. <laughs> Mindy, I want to be part of this venture. <laughs> I think by the end of the year, like all of you guys are going to become like best friends with one another. We are going to be like besties. <laughs> Mindy, thank you for this love. I've been feeling off for at least two weeks to a month. I truly didn't realize what was going on, energies and such. I was the wounded feminine for sure. I'm getting better, but still not 100% back to myself. I'm weird 
I'm a weird way. I feel in a weird way. I feel better knowing I wasn't making this up, and it was a collective thing. Yes, it was a collective thing, and Mindy, you have acknowledged it, and this is when awakening happens, and you are going back to the right path. So, thanks for being so honest and from the heart. You know, your comments is, is inspiring those around you, this group, everyone. So, thanks for that. And I will do more updates on my page, Twin Flames Reunited. You know. I'll try to do it more daily. It's just this week I've been wanting to do it and just never got like that good 20 minutes to do those, um, like write them out. Like I'd really channel channel them, but getting them, which I will do. Tonight I will definitely do a channeling about this. Hi, Samantha. Yes, welcome. Yes, you can always watch the beginning later. We're actually wrapping up, but thanks so much for coming in. You know, we are talking about the wounded feminine and it's such an important topic and a beautiful one too. So thanks, Samantha, for joining in. Um, and Lorinda, lol, he kept trying to feed me when I was there this morning. He feels the need to take care of me as well. There's some... That's something I've never had in a relationship. That will take some time to get used to. Yes, it's all about balance because often the divine feminine is not ready to accept all the affection too. And then you're wondering why my divine masculine is not accepting the affection. Are you ready to accept all the uh, fathering he might do on you? Like you want to mother him. Are you ready for the fathering? You know, you don't, you don't want. So let your parents be your parents and let your divine counterpart be your divine counterpart, you know, like your romantic counterpart and have a balance. You guys are both individuals, beautiful individuals and allow them to be. That's why space and time and allowing them to be themselves is the most important thing you can do for your divine counterpart. Wow, really, man. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> I drank so much water. Amy, yes. Even distant mind does things for me. He has fixed my car and fixed my phone this past week. Oh, yes. Divine masculines have that. Like, it's something really sweet. Example, you don't have a phone wire or something. They'll be so quick to, like, help you fix it. If you have an issue with your computer, they will be so quick to, like, help you diagnose the problem and try to help you out. I think that's one way he feels showing his love right now. Yes, that's one way of divine masculine showing their love. Like they are very protective and they, they can, actually they remember. They would like come and check in. Like you tell them that, oh, I have this issue with my computer. Like months later, they'll be like, hey, is your computer fine? Like is it? So that's their love language. Melanie, oh, thank you so much. I'm so excited and looking forward to it. Lauren, I've decided I don't need a channel message tonight. I'd rather be surprised. Oh, that is so beautiful. I really love that attitude of yours, Lauren. You are so wonderful. Mindy, anything coming from Joe, messages, updates or anything? Well, uh, Joe is... Joe is in um, what you call the hibernation mode. So there's not much of activity on his end. But uh, his higher self wants you to know that he loves you a lot and he adores you. And when you are in pain, it hurts him a lot too. But he still admires you for your strength and tenacity and how you're so beautiful at evolving and becoming the best version of yourself. Belinda, any messages coming through from MA for me this week? <laughs> I love the diamond analogy. Yeah, I love that too. Isn't that wonderful? So MA wants you to know that um, he's hanging in there and that he's watching over you in ways that you don't even know and that he adores you and he loves everything about you and he loves being with you and he just wants it to be more constant and consistent. So he's working a way to be together with you soon. Shay, yes, I started out so sad and hurt and obsessed about what we would talk again. Then I started praying and building my relationship with God. Now I understand it's a process. Yes, Shay, thank you so much for that. It is a process, guys. And and the process just doesn't start. It, it takes time. So Shay, thank you so much for bringing that up. It takes a while, guys. So you have to go through step by step in trying to uncover this process and having this supportive tribe and 
trusting and surrendering eventually. I think Animal is the first true alpha male I've ever met. Most are wannabe alphas. Yes, there are a lot of wannabe alpha males in this world. So guys, I'm just going to go on. Oh, we are way above our one hour mark. So I'm just going to go on for like 10 more minutes, guys. So if you have any closing questions, just ask me and I'll give you a brief answer. Uh, Megan, um, Amy, yes, mine is in working and business mode. Yes, they are workaholics. The, the divine wounded, we will do, I will definitely do a video on wounded masculines and the toxic masculine at some point. I will definitely do uh do that and then we can all focus on what they are and what they're going through but importantly another point i wanted to touch is how the toxic feminine tends to throw all the blame on them oh my divine masculine requires more healing oh they need more healing but actually you need more healing and that's why healing is even popping up so don't push all the blame towards them as well because it's all you guys are one and everything is mirrored back so if you feel he needs healing probably you need healing and vice versa. And yes, like Amy says, they most most divine masculines are like your DM as well. You know, they can be distanced and not focus on the DF. But that's okay, you know. At least they are building their career and trying to build themselves up and grow. But they tend to be workaholics very much. The DMs tend to like really drown in work or drown in partying, you know, things like that. Samantha, do you think guilt is the reason I haven't seen B in seven weeks? I know I've shared with you all the changes he had the past week, but it feels like he's avoid seeing me, though I'm trying to not take it personal. Definitely, I feel like there is some guilt being released, and, and I feel like a lot of guilt comes from him for not being the best to you, and he feels that he could have been a better man, and I feel all that is releasing. So give him that time and space to actually acknowledge that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to rebuild this connection from the start with you and that you are loving and accepting. So, yeah, don't take it personal. It's him. Lorinda, mine goes into party mode. John did tell me once that I was on his mind more than anyone else. You see, they love to go into party mode because they think that party mode and looking at other females might make them forget you, but it actually reminds you of them. It reminds them of you more. <laughs> Animal has finally begun to truly face his shadows and demons. He's got all of them. Like he's 17 days completely sober now. That's amazing, Megan, that transformation. And you have inspired that. And that's wonderful. Belinda, my DM is a workaholic. Yes, most DMs are workaholics by nature. And they can also go into that party side of things as a distraction. <laughs> Megan, that is amazing. Happy for you and proud of you. Belinda, mine too. Um... Yes, Frank is still coming in and out. And I feel like there's a lot of career-related issues popping up for him. So he's trying to find stability there. He wants you to hang in there and that he will come back to you um, much more alive and full of potential. And he wants you to know that he loves you and adores you and cares a lot about you, Shay, and that he will always love you and you are, in his, you are on his mind all the time. Tamara, hello everyone. I was listening while driving. Finally got home and I can say hi. Oh, thanks Tamara for being here and listening. And yes, guys, Tamara says hi to all of you. <coughs> Mindy, it's tough because they just don't see that they are using work to hide from their feelings. Yes, they use work to hide from all their feelings. Bro, my DM expressed this week that he wished he could be physically there to take care of me and do everything for me. He said he knows I deserve it. Oh, I'm so glad, bro. That is that is such beautiful news to you. I'm so happy for you. And he means every word of it, you know. And that's what I kept telling you as well in our previous readings. You know, he really wants to create that home for you and be there for you. And because you deserve it and you deserve the best and he knows it. That's such beautiful transformation. You guys are both amazing. Ro, it's, I'm so happy. And thanks for sharing this with um, the group. Amy, oh, that's beautiful. Amber, I would love to know any messages from James about our, James and our connection. Please, <laughs> thank you. Well, James is still working through his issues. So he is pretty much 
really in this zone where he's like a wounded masculine, you know, he's just having a lot of regret the way he had treated you in the past. So he's working through all of that and he wants to know that he will come back when he's feeling better. And he loves you forever and forever and forever. And he loves you so much that he can't even express it in words. And he knows that you think about him all the time. And he wants you to know that he thinks about you all the time too. Oh, Ro, he brought me to tears. One of the nicest things he have ever said to me. Oh, that is sweet, Ro, and you deserve it. You know, it's such a beautiful thing. What you both share is so beautiful, and I'm so happy for you. I'm so excited for you, and uh, looking forward to all the great things that are coming ahead for you as well. Lorinda, same with John. Most guys puff up and talk big shit. John straight up can and will back it up. Yes. Megan, I would love messages from uh, animals' higher self about his 3D thoughts. Well, his 3D thoughts is in fear mode because it's like, have I committed too quickly? Like he's got a lot of things popping up in his head and he wants to live up to his expectations. So he feels like, oh, have I given too much? Would I be able to live up to it? Would I be able to be committed? Will I be able to love her forever? All these questions are running through his 3D mind and he's trying to figure these things out. Um, and at the same time, his 3D self adores you so much, you know, finds you so attractive and admirable and he loves you so much and he really wants to build a family with you and he wants and he can see how it's going to be amazing and, and how you, you guys are going to be one big happy family belinda oh thank you vaishnavi for that message from ma so kind of you to share it with me ab my ex always had to say that an alpha male is that's the first sign of a non-alpha male if they have to say it all the time yeah it's like they want to like they think that by saying it they're becoming one Belinda, and thank you so much for today and for all the guidance you give us i love this group and this lives as well as the community we have it's a beautiful space we should all meet up in singapore at some stage yes guys that would be lovely we would definitely organize something in the future that would be that would be truly wonderful and you know we have built this beautiful tribe and you guys are from all over the world it would be so nice to be to be all in the same room you know and and it would be so wonderful. Thanks, Belinda, for raising that. Oh, Mindy, I'll be your friend. Yes, you guys are all friends with one another. We have built such a beautiful community. Amy, mine is still so amazing. He tries to fight the connection, but I also know he has a hard time staying away. He'll be here tomorrow on Sunday as normal. We never go a day without talking. Just have to get healed and through this before we can be best for each other. Yes, and everything will be fantastic. You know, we'll go great. Mindy, he said he's got those M MFS in a chokehold. His demons. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, pleasure. What I want to know is how to pronounce your... Oh, my name. My name is pronounced as Vaishnavi. It's actually a goddess, the name of a goddess. And uh, my dad was, before marrying my mom, he went on this, like, hike all through India and... You know, having been born in Singapore and all that, it's like he went on this thing trip with his cousins. And then he had to like hike to this temple, the Vaishnavi temple. I think it's like a 18 mile hike. And then apparently when I was born, he had the photo of the goddess. And that's when he was inspired to name me, name me after the goddess. And so that was quite an inspiring one. So my name is pronounced as Vaishnavi. People call me Vaish. And yeah. Mindy, I got cut off. Did anything come through uh, from JMZ? Um, I actually did say, so basically I'll summarize what I said. Uh, JMZ wants to know that he really cares about you and he adores you and he will do everything in his place to make things right. Shay, you're welcome, Megan. He keeps calling me perfect, says you are perfect all the time. I hope he doesn't back out. He wouldn't back out completely. It's all, it will all uh, go with the flow. <laughs> Kelly, thanks for that. Guys, yeah, you can always relook anything that I've said. I think I've been pronouncing it. It, it doesn't matter. You know? Having grown up in Singapore, like none of my teachers ever pronounced my name. In fact, in Australia, like my professors were pronouncing my name like right, you know, like it's, 
It's uh, they've always like that's what I really appreciate about the West. You know, they always make an effort to learn how to pronounce our names, and it's truly wonderful. Kelly, thank you. We all have. <laughs> yes, I know, Kelly, your surname as well, right? Um, Amber, thank you so much. He's opening up more and more, and we, we both are. It feels so good. I think we know that we both know what this is and that things are moving forward. Mindy, yay. Mindy, and we are friends. You are one of the few that I keep in the loop and keep in touch with. You're a sweetheart. I'm so glad. Like, you guys are amazing how you're building such amazing um, friendships with one another. And I'll be so beautiful to see you, my dearest, dearest sister. Um, so happy to see you. It's always nice to have you here. And before I answer your question, I wanted to share this point. So the reason why, like, ancient women, they always were healthy and balanced because they had this sisterhood going on. So in the past, women always had this place to be themselves and talk and catch up. So this happened in the river. So it's called the story of the river women. So women, in that in those olden days, olden days there was no washing machine, right? So women all went to the river to wash their clothes. And when they were washing their clothes, they caught up with all their sisters or other female friends and this happened every day and this was a routine and that's why in modern times that doesn't happen because everyone is so busy with everything they do it's important to have a female tribe and to actually connect with all your sisters on a daily basis and that's why i wanted to share this with you guys you know to have that tribe and to go back to and draw inspiration from those ancient times of like going by the river and sharing all your problems and realizing that everything can be talked about and there will always be a solution based on experiences everything Oh, yeah, because it's spelled that way. And again, you know, Indian parents, numerology reasons. And um, I think this astrologer was like, oh, you know, because my dad had really selected that name for me when I was born. And then they had to spell it that way. So it is a unique spelling. You know, my name Vaishnavi is never spelled this way at all. So it's very unique. There's only one of me in the entire world. <laughs> so, yes, it's pronounced as Vaishnavi. So Vaish is, is my short form. Oh, <laughs> now I have to start all over. Nah, it's, it's completely cool. You know, it's Belinda. Now I want to be part of this friendship. Yes, guys, you're all friends with one another and it's all beautiful and transformational. All right, I'm going to answer Obby's question. Was there a major shift today and that might bring us closer to union? If not, no problem, but I'm curious. Actually, there is. I was talking about the energies. The, the energies earlier this week were so intense that there were many tower moments and a lot of divine feminines were hitting a breaking point. And I wanted to actually do my channeling. It's just that I couldn't gather the time to do it on my page, Twin Flames Reunited. But I was giving everyone a heads up on that. So now there's actually a major shift today and a lot of twin flames are closer to union than ever before. So yes, Obi, I second that. Obi, also oh, too, that sisterhood is central to our emotional and psychological and social health. Yes, yes, exactly, guys. Thanks, Obi, for raising that. It is so vital for our emotional, psychological, and social health. And that's why it's so important to form that tribe, that sisterhood tribe. And I'm so happy we have it here. You know, we're all like sisters to one another, supporting, helping, inspiring, talking to one another, helping one another, another through those difficult times because it's not easy being on this twin flame journey. Oh, and I'm so glad. You see, you guys are already talking to one another. Amy, this lives uplift me and make me feel less alone in this journey. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. I love that. I'm the only Obi and it's pretty cool to be, exactly, it's pretty cool to be the only one. It is Obi. It's so unique. Like I've like, no one spells my name this way. So I'm, I'm thankful to my mom and dad for that. <laughs> yeah, I did a big thing today. I just came out of nowhere and I just knew what to do. Thank you all. That's wonderful. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap up. So if you guys have any questions, uh, or we will see each other again that, that 
<laughs> next week. Let me take a sip of water. All right, guys, I think we have got a good 90 minutes here and it's all here. You guys may want to re-listen to some of the tips I've shared on how to not stray away from going down the path of the wounded feminine. We will de definitely discuss and touch more on this in the coming weeks. And I'm so excited to bring you guys another topic next week. And have a fabulous week. I will do more channeling through my page, which I will share it in the group as well. You guys take care and have a lovely, lovely, lovely weekend. I love you all so much. It's my pleasure to stay extra long. Don't worry about it. And if you guys ever want a private reading, feel free to DM me. All my services are listed on my file. And uh, thank you for all. Thank you for being you. You guys are amazing. Uh, thanks, Obi. I know I had like two bottles of water, like you would have noticed because I forgot my water bottle and I actually went back to take it. And yes, hydrate vice, hydrate fish in water. Yes, I'm a Pisces, so like water and me. I can literally live by the beach and I'm really blessed because I live next to the beach. The beach is just two minutes down my house and... Uh, but of course, the waters in Singapore are not as beautiful as you know, Europe or the US or Australia. So I always yearn back. I'm always searching for the most beautiful beaches in the world. And I'm a Mintakan, you know, so naturally I'm drawn to crystal clear waters and perfect blue crystal clear waters. I love that. That really excites me. So guys, you guys take care. Love you all. Thanks for all the heart, Shay, Crystal, Amber. Thank you. Uh, so talk to you all next week and Tamra, thank you, Ro, thank you and uh, good night Kelly, thanks for staying up, really appreciate you coming in this week too. Um, Kelly and Tamra, our other readers, so guys, you know, we have an amazing team here, if you guys ever want a free reading, you can request for us as well. So I will look forward to seeing you all. And if you guys ever want a private reading or healing, feel free to message me and check out my services on my file or my website. And I will do more channelings on my page, Twin Flame Reunited, so you guys can tune in there, which I will share on our group as well. And guys, be yourselves. Acknowledge what you're going through. Never bury them because burying them is the worst thing that you can do to yourself. Always remember you have a very supportive community here, a tribe here. Everything that stays here, stays here. Everything that's shared here, stays here as well. So you guys can be completely yourselves here. Everything is private. So don't worry. We have an amazing tribe here. And don't ever feel alone. I am here for you. We are here for you. And, and you guys, we will go on to build wonderful friendships and like Belinda had suggested we will all meet up in the US or in Singapore or in Europe somewhere but this will happen. Alright guys take care love you all and see you all next week. Bye bye.